So do you think this was an attempt by Vladimir Putin to, to send a signal to the G7? Because if he has, he sent a bad message, hasn't he? Because now they're teaming up on him. I'm not convinced that it would be anything uh, thought through in that way, actually. I don't think there's any doubt that what uh, Russia... Are, well, clearly what they're continuing to do is to put pressure in the east on the Donbass, but they are also continuing to send a message that they can reach anywhere in Ukraine. And the bottom line is there is no sign of the initial objective changing from a Russian perspective, which is actually to take over the whole of Ukraine. So the ability to, to reach Kiev, uh, to hit Kiev, and indeed to hit other places where they know, for example, NATO weapons are coming in, reinforcements of equipment and so forth, that are, they're doing that all the time. So it may be that it may be that they wanted to send a message today, but I, I don't, I, I personally don't think it's anything well thought out like that. Could this now what's been decided at the G7, could it now actually almost provoke Putin? Could we find him now really starting to bombard Kiev and go, right, OK, I tell you what, I'm just going to roll all the tanks in all at once before they all team up against me? Well, I don't think he's got the ability to do that. I, I don't think there's any doubt we have to recognise that Putin's approach is difficult to think through. They, they, you know, what they tried initially didn't work. It is moving pretty slowly in the East, but nonetheless, the, the, they are using, I mean, for example, they're using around 20,000 rounds of artillery ammunition every day in the Donbass, 20,000. And they are making progress. And there's no doubt that, in my view, they will secure the Donbass and the eastern provinces. Yeah, it but is, what, are they going to be secu- uh, what are they going to be securing? Is it just territory? Because it looks like they're about to level the whole place. Well, they, that's true. They, they, uh, but they will secure the territory. They will secure those provinces. Now, you know, we can, we can have a conversation about how much of that is worth having, in inverted commas. But from their point of view, it is important. And it is important to both secure that and then maintain momentum, particularly along the northern uh, shores of the, of the Black Sea, put pressure on Odessa, keep pressure on Kiev, keep the political pressure going. And why do I say that as much as anything? It's because we know that this autumn and, and winter, there are going to be huge pressures on the West in terms of energy. Uh, the German uh, uh, deputy national security advisor said the other day, notwithstanding what they've just been saying at the G7, that um, what they need to concentrate now is future relationships with Russia. I, I think the whole business of the West holding firm for, for a long period of time is still, in my mind, pretty suspect. And from a military point of view, okay. we will continue to support them. We will continue to provide equipment. But actually, some of these complex weapon systems we're running out of. Uh, and the well, uh, this they, is you know, it, take a long it? time to replace. And, and actually, if it is true that, that Putin wants to get Ukraine and then kick on, you know, if he realises that people like Britain have used up a huge amount of their resources in Ukraine, which is a war that he has then gone on to win, he has managed to weaken more than one opponent, hasn't he? Very, very quickly, before I start, start getting shouted out, do you think that Zelensky will make it out of this alive very quickly? Yes. Yeah, I think he will. Uh, and I think he will hold Ukraine together. And therefore, when it comes to negotiations, he will be in, fairly, in a fairly strong position.